Hi everyone, my name is Adam. I'm uh, currently running the agenda uh, as DevOps manager in HP Software. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, how can we build uh, all this uh, complex process in enterprise uh, solution when actually you have uh, your software in, uh, in the middle state with low coverage and you should increase the coverage day by day and you should deliver all this, all this uh, uh, software to, uh, to a lot of, uh, of customers and we are talking about 100, 200 and, and such customers that increase each day. Uh, so let's start and the end of the session I will illustrate some demo regarding the solution that we have and how all this process of, of deployment is working out in HP. Okay, let's start. So, the first one, I will start from the basics, okay? We are not, uh, we are talking about the full bone. Let's start from the, from the basic about the continuous integration and continuous deployment. So actually, what is our tool that we're using for, to receive it, uh, target? Actually, we have a continuous delivery based on Jenkins, or it's inside the HP application and tool that have a lot of customers that actually provide us operation orchestration that we can build our whole pipeline with very well uh, visualization, because currently they have a different roles in our organization. We have infrastructure, we have my team is DevOps organization. We have SaaS operators. We have QA and have PCE, security architects, etc. So actually, each one of them can be able to, to modify the best scripts, see all whole pipeline, and the most important is to understand for each step where was the problem, what parameters were transferred into the function, what the output, and all of this should use the same framework. Okay. Very brief about our principles. It's not our principles, it's smart and far principle that actually with this take it as axiom, uh, automate everything. Because in the previous version of our software, they had a lot of the problems regarding that I forget to check in my script, uh, the script on my, on, on my laptop, uh, the kernel changes were not aligned to the application needs. Uh, build quality in, and we will talk about this, what tools we are using right now uh, to get it. Uh, dance new release, and it's a very important point, but because uh, we are pushing each day our code to production in small pieces, like 901 bug fixes, uh, improvements for specific, for specific user that will give us a very huge business impact, etc. So, it's a basic continuous integration, well known. I think that, that, that most of you is uh, know all these two Jenkins master. We have a slave. We have, they use a Nexus master as a repository. And this is the time to talk that our development is spread between many regions, like Prague, China, US, etc. Each of them should have the high availability to get uh, all the artifacts that our platform is produced, a sonar to understand the quality for the continuous integration that include uh, all our test frameworks uh, and <coughs> static code analysis like PMD, fine bugs, etc. There's lots of tools that actually uh, allow you to do the same for JavaScript project, uh, Git, we are using Git as source control, all server and staging. Uh, it's very important to understand that Jenkins Master or Nexus, etc., uh, never changed before the changes approved by our team in production, excuse me, in, in staging machine. So new plugins for Jenkins, new improvements for Nexus, new data for AO. First of all, it's moving through the staging process, approved by our team, it has its own unit test and system test, and we should understand what the impact on the whole system. It's operational orchestration. I will show you the demo in the end that uh, will explain. 
Okay, the continuous integration is very simple. We have a, a happy developer that uses Git that push the code through Jenkins. We have two farms. Actually, we have a local farm in our uh, data center in EU, and we have another one in in the United States. Uh, actually, on the United States farm, we run only a partial suite of tests to be sure that our uh, security or performance uh, tests are okay, that KPI is fine, that we don't lose any, any data, etc. Because currently, we don't have a, they don't have the whole picture of the changes that IT made in a multi-region sites, like in US and London, etc. So we should verify each time that we are fine with all data centers. Okay, so currently what we have in CI, unit test, REST system test, UI Selenium test, upgrade test. Uh, I want to emphasize the point regarding the upgrade test because currently the upgrade is most painful point in no delivery process. Because we have a lot of tenants, a lot of customers, a lot of projects, a lot of customization, and we should be sure that upgrade will be clean, no errors, no downtime. So how actually this point can be achieved? So actually we moved uh, some delta from our project to our labs and each and, and our continuous integration test running on the upgraded project from the customer data. In on-premise, the, the, the big difference that between on-premise and the SaaS solution, that in on-premise you have a clean installation. You came to the customer, you have your disk, you install the new product, you install the new tenant, and everything is clean. In SaaS, it's opposite. Each chicken should be verified with upgrade solution. So each test that, that meant here, REST system test and Selenium test should be run over upgraded system. Okay, the performance test. The performance test, what, what I meant here is actually a single user experience. It's very important because from, my, from our opinion, uh, the expectation from, from developer is growing up with time because currently, uh, from our opinion, uh, a developer should understand what is the security bug, what is the performance bug, and now expert about the security and PCOE, the performance, and performance engineer of excellence, should uh, be involved in the development process. So actually, we write a system that connected that connected to, Jen to Jenkins. So we have, we used the same test like Selenium test and like system test to get that performance KPI. It means we don't write new performance test. We take the same infrastructure, we take the same test, we edit some uh, annotation on the test that this te test B can use like a performance test, okay? So as you can see right now here, in this number six or whatever, we have a regression about the KPI. It means the developer, if he cannot understand what exactly the reason uh, to this regression, he actually can call and uh, the performance engineer, they will sit together and understand deep to, 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 to the problem and the problem should, should be resolved. So actually they have a KPI regarding end-to-end -end story and also, we have a KPI regarding the transaction, okay? We have a test that divided inside several transactions. If we are talking about the Selenium test or REST test, that have a several small user stories. So we can see that what was the expected, all the KPIs integrated inside, integrated inside Jenkins. So you can change the KPI inside Jenkins and everything is in one system, uh, this plugin actually uh, help us very much with regression that related to, to performance issues and violations. Okay, the continuous integration in the near future, uh, in SAS, we actually realized that we have 
IT very involved in our development. What I meant, we have a changes on a operation system level. I meant we run uh, on Reddit uh, 6. So we have, a, we have a kernel changes. We have the configuration changes. We have security, and cetera, ports, threads, everything. So the question was how our IT engineer actually can work in the same mode like our developers working. It means when I made Shakim a chef script, a paper sheet, it's not matter. He wants to be sure that test, application test, it's fine. That he don't close any ports, that he don't uh, um, harm the performance and security, etc. So actually our next step is to use the following tools like a vagrant, uh, that use the virtual box and JK Thrive tool. The, this uh, mini slaves that will run on the uh, physical machine will be created on the fly uh, with the Sahara plugin that actually related to, to connect it to the Vagrant tool. We can actually capture the state of the operation system. And after the tests are finished, we can roll back our system back to the clean image. So actually, we test also the IT changes. Out of them, we test our application test. OK? As I mentioned before, we have a, a lot of developers outside of Israel. So Nexus is artifact repository, should be available to all of them in each each minute and each second, because actually we have a lot of problems with the downtime of machine and our friends from China call us, guys, come on, we need this artifact, we can continue, etc. So what we did here is actually high availability for our uh, Nexus. Uh, we have two proxies that actually looking on the master is synchronized automatically when artifacts uploaded to the Nexus master. So who is responsible to upload artifact to Nexus master? Only Jenkins has the permission to upload the artifacts to the Nexus master after the pipeline of tests that include the security, as I mentioned before, the security performance, etc., can be updated if everything is green. It can be upgraded to the Nexus master. Okay? The Nexus master actually has three different repositories. The first one is snapshot in QA that deployed each check-in, each hour, whatever. The next one is the staging one, and the last one is the production. So it's the basic continuous delivery flow that we have automatic deployment by request automatically when actually J J Jenkins finish his job uh, with all the framework, all the tests is passed. Actually, we will deploy the new machine to validate this machine actually used to validation from the dev side and QA side. After that, we have a staging and production. So how? How it works? Actually, we have two labs. We have a dev lab that's located and uh, used by our de de developers. We have a SaaS lab. These two labs are not co connected each other because of the security and we have actually a well defined port and protocol that we are working up on and this is the structure. We have a time scheduled manual build. It's mean each night we deployed all our QA, PCOE and security environment to be able to reproduce how the process that will be a happened in production environment. So actually CI master triggered that, that, that job on these waves. It's uploaded to Nexus. What next? This whole server that I will produce, that I will show the, the short demo in the end of the presentation. We deploy all dev environment and upload after that the call to all that actually uh, located in lab uh, on SaaS lab. 
why we have two different O server? Because a deployment, actually, we're, we're looking at it like a regular code. We are developer, we are developing on this machine for all server that, that, that located in dev environment. All the content is pushed to lab servers, to all server, only after a very deep verification. Also, we have a Nexus proxy that's located in our SAS lab. So the question is why we need a Nexus proxy located in the lab that's actually located in the US when we have a master. Why do they cannot push the artifact from the master to, to, to the environment it deployed on QA, etc.? Because actually, when we're looking on QA environment, QA guys can actually roll back to the previous version redeploy the same version several times, so actually we reduce the time of upload of the artifact to the lab, because this lab actually located in Israel and this lab located in the US. All our QA working on production-like environment. They are never validated their, sorry, teachers, etc. on the dev environment. Dev environment used only by developers. So after that, we we'll get the request to deploy. RAS is a, a component that actually gives us the, the possibility to connect securely to QA environment. Uh, it's inside protocol, so I will not uh, expand about it. So after that, we have a, a deploy on QA. So, Okay, we know that QA is the, we have a security engineer and PCU engineer, performance engineer, that their cycle, it's not the same like a cycle of regular QA guys that uh, need uh, our uh, deliveries each night. The PCU test can take, can take something like two days, three days, and more. So we give them the ability to deploy by request. So they actually choose what version they want to redeploy. It's a middle of the uh, artifact that's located in Nexus, and they can choose the, the location, the target, and what exact artifact they want to auto deploy and on what machine. So actually, actually, it's the same. We build our infrastructure based on all uh, in that way that we have the same infrastructure for manually automatically, development, production, SaaS operation, and staging, all those flows use the same infrastructure. So what difference? The difference is the authentication and authorization level, because uh, we don't like it that actually a developer push the content to production. We have SaaS operation that actually their responsibility is to validate the terms it's okay, that our customer is ready to get the changes, etc., and only after that they can push the content to production. So actually, only these guys from a uh, SaaS operation get the appropriate permission to push the content to production. Okay, but before we want, but, but before we're pushing code to production, uh, we want to validate this code in the final stage on staging machine. So what happened? The first, the, the, the first step is actually to take the snapshot repository, rebuild it, and to create a release candidate. This release candidate will be uploaded to the same Nexus, but to different repository that's called staging repository that will hold all release candidates. So what is the flow? QA operator that proved that the content is okay, that quality is in, that we are fine with the sole feature and, and modifications, actually request from the old server, start the process. Actually, all servers connect to the same Jenkins master. The build is started. We upload our content to the Nexus master sync with the Nexus proxy, and we have 
the relevant content on the Nexus proxy. The next step is also not automatically, because currently the, the content exists on the proxy machine, but uh, we give the ability to our SaaS operator to hold on the process of automatic deployment, and he should manually approve <coughs> that everything is okay, and, and he is ready to move to, to, to the staging machine. Okay, so actually we have a promote to, to production and now we are ready to deploy the production. Actually in HP we have three different geographies in Sydney, Austin and London. We have operators that one, each of them uh, uh, actually uh, responsible on each geography and uh, they have a different uh, time zone, etc. So the deployment is not a uh, running in parallel, but by request. So actually, what happened here? Each of the operator have the same request to production server. Content is uploaded to the RAS. It's actually the, the machine that have all the security uh, authority to, to hold all the content to be deployed on the machines. And the next step is actually uh, deploy the content to the external environment in London and in Sydney. Uh, in Austin, we have two production servers. When I mean production servers, mean we have uh, several farms. Each farm has several nodes, so the uh, upgrade uh, should should run smoothly. And what is the the, the internal uh, node mean. We, AGM is the application that help us to, to, to work, to, uh, to development team work with uh, Agile. So we have all the dashboard and iteration and task, etc. So we as a development is in HP using this, this project to manage our own iteration and product and, and backlog items, etc. So the internal customer is our own, so deployment that the first deployment is, is always happened on the internal uh, project and internal customers, and only after two or three days of validation with internal customer, we actually provide the same content to our external customers. So, 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 so first of all, you're saying that you dog footing the product? Yes. Always? Yeah, always. So how, how long does it usually take for a single line of code, you know, a single feature, a single bug fix to get to the end customer? Uh, in those cases? From the from the step that code is checked in, yeah, code, it, code is finished, it's, it's really finished something like 15 minutes. To the end product, yeah. to the end user. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned that you have like two days internal test, right? Okay. Okay, I got your question. Okay. Uh, after we have a, approval on internal uh, on on internal environment, it can take one day, two days, depending on content and change. In case we're talking about 911 call, it's automatically uh, moved to external to, 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 to external farm. Yeah. Okay, okay. so it's, it's usually a matter of days. Yes. Between, between commit and user meets code. Okay. Yes. I, I think what, what, what stands out here is that uh, this kind of software has different I guess business needs. Yes. Then, for example, what you need mentioned before, Wix, right? Yeah. Because they have, you know, they have user-facing servers. Now, I mean, uh, let's just call it B two C, okay? And you guys are B two B, and I, I suppose, I mean, at least in this sense, that you have different kind of expectations for yes. your customers. Yes. Actually, they have a one major release in month that held a lot of content that developed. Uh, during the end months, in case of uh, 911 calls or urgency bug fixes, it takes something like one day, and uh, our production environment is ready after QA validation, etc. The hub has SLA something like uh, 48 how, hours. How long was this this cycle before you started, you know, moving to this kind of setup? <sighs> okay, so um, only uh, when the content is ready, okay. 
and verified by our QA to upload and to verify that all environments is okay, the whole script is ready, upgraded, and integration has worked fine. It's, it took something like three, four days. Three, four days of actual work. Actual right. work of SaaS operators, of development, of QA, of IT guys, etc. Because each of them uh, should verify his part and the integration process between uh, uh, different services included right. in this. So do you have plans to take that further? I mean, do you have different goals for you no know, uh, agility in that sense? Do you want to take it lower than one or two days, or are you comfortable with that? Actually, uh, right now we are comfortable by, by this, because as, as, as you mentioned before, they have a little bit different business. Our customers important. Uh, our customers do not expect from us the, the delivery uh, several times a day. So we are not Facebook and Google and cetera, but they are yes expect they that they are expected from us to fix the nine one problems as soon as possible. Because we have a very uh, strict SLA regarding the bug fixes and the downtime and cetera. Quality. Okay, so so the quality. Uh, the Jenkins and Sonar are quality gates, and regarding the Sonar, uh, the the first phase I mentioned that when you start with the low coverage, and you run only up in Sonar, I think Sonar were released uh, by the end of the year. The ability to validate your trend of code coverage with Jacoka. It means that you not only a uh, uh, measure your uh, uh, total coverage with, for, 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 for example, 75% and etc. But you mentioned that your current coverage cannot be less than the previous one. And this make your uh, code coverage better and better each step. It means that from development perspective, I must check in my code with test. Because the, the coverage is calculated after each check-in. Okay, so right now we are uh, something near 70% uh, of coverage that actually merged between the unit test, system test, and UI test. You can actually merge the reports from the unit test, integration test, and Sonar is the last version is supposed to actually uh, unite the, the, the reports to a single uh, co coverage report. Okay. Okay, Adam, let's give this uh, five more uh, minutes and then we'll open the questions. Okay. So, oh. So, actually, what happened here? We actually select the type of deployment is create new deployment. We have all the visualization map for each step. All this list is actually the content of Nexus repository. So each developer can select the, the correct artifact for deployment. Here we have a, a subset flow. Everything in row is based on different levels. You can dip inside each flow and expand it. Uh, you can connect all actually to each tool you want. It's Java code, Bash script, uh, etc. Uh, so your deployment script can be from various a uh, range of uh, of tools. As we see here, we see a very good visualization regarding the best step and 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 the. Uh, it is green or red, etc. If you have an error, the attach log is actually automatically attached <coughs> to the step. So I don't need to browse to specify the machine to find the appropriate log, uh, what happened, and uh, to upload to another machine, etc. for validation and research. Actually, everything is attached to the step. Each test is fully customized. You can write your own step and integrate it inside the row. Uh, 
Okay, currently we are configured initial node. I remove it forward. So all these are not steps. Yeah, in the, in the deployment. deployment. Yeah, and what happened in this in, in this uh, step is failed. You should report report to whom who is your PDF that I find for these steps to, to get this error. Uh, by the way, all this process is run wireless by uh, in the uh, nightly or dev installation. We don't use this UI. Only we have a remote call to REST API that all uh, providers for, for, uh, for, for, for developers. Uh, Could you maybe pause here and just you know give a few examples of what are the, those steps? Okay. One sec. What is important that uh, we can use the summary report and history tree for each step, where, where, where we can see all the parameters that actually move to each step. You can actually replay from each step forward. You can pause. You can look on the report, we will get just a second and get a full report regarding our deployment process. Right. Uh, it, it's IPs. It's just very hard to read. So yeah. if you could you know, give a few examples of what are those steps. Okay. I see some SSH steps, some email, what do you have else? Let's see. Okay. So, for example, we, we verified the old deployment is in exist on same machine. In case it exists, we are, no, we are not actually deleting the old deployment. We is we is uh, it and move it outside of the production. After that, we have in case everything is okay, we actually stop and move our uh, code, our uh, our artifact outside uh, variable resolution. If we are talking about a new installation, connect to existing project or upgrade because for the nightly deployment, I want to verify my new installation of uh, creating a new node for, for scaling, okay? Or uh, for example, uh, run the project on upgraded database. It means I should be connect to existing farm. So right now we, we, we should choose what flow is actually should be run. Okay, so how do you code, how do you code those steps? Okay, uh, actually all have a very, uh, very good development studio that each of the items you, 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 you can develop with your preferred language actually, okay. with Java, with .NET, with script, etc. So you provide a library? Yeah. We provide the library, okay. we provide the library with the whole flow, and actually this flow as artifact is uploaded to production all server. So all these steps is actually verified in our dev environment before we are publishing them to our production operations us. All right, so an OO is actually one of the products yeah. that are being worked on. Okay. Yeah. OO is internal is 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 HP product that have a lot of customers and uh, No, it's not on Bivan Okay, good. So, so uh, I think we'll open up to a few questions. Yep. Uh, anyone have questions? I have a question about the whole thing. Does that mean that represent a part of the development? For example, if you take something like the sound, you would be able to deploy in that model or in No, actually, the okay. I got a question. Actually, uh, all sa 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 support uh, with the parallel flow, the the input of your uh, um, machine is variable, 
can be a list of machines that you want to deploy in parallel or sequential mode. So it's, it can be done. It can be done with the deployment, can run in parallel on several machines. Okay, so thank you, Adam. Thank you.